Alright, so good morning, good afternoon, good night, whenever you all are watching this. So, I'm going to go into the Russian Revolution today. A really short lecture, hopefully it's short. Uh, I feel like a lot of these lectures have been going over 20 minutes. So I try to make this as quick as possible. So, right now in the news, I'm pretty sure some of you have seen these people that are trying to break the stay-at-home orders. Uh, maybe they're getting cabin fever, maybe they think that their First Amendment rights are not being taken seriously. But whatever the reason is, my response is this. So remember, a lot of people are passing away because of the coronavirus. That's why our governor and governors around the country have made going out not possible unless it's for necessary reasons like getting groceries going to work um, and a lot of people are protesting a lot of people might be asymptomatic they might not show symptoms but it means that they can still pass on the virus to other people like the elderly without even knowing it so i feel like a lot of people are being ignorant about the situation and they're just going out with no regards to the six feet rule which is unfortunate so let's move on. Unit 8 is the Russian Revolution. Section 1 is Life in Russia. Content objective. I'll be able to understand the Russian Revolution and the causes and effects for it. Essential question. How and why did the Bolsheviks and not the other major parties come to power in Russia in October slash November of 1917? Vocabulary of the day. Russo-Japanese War. Bloody Sunday. Karl Marx, Bolsheviks, and October Manifesto. And then this is what the agenda will be. Last week, you all already started on analyzing the data of Russian serfs slash peasants. I'll do a lecture. Your assignment for this week is a DBQ of the cause and effects of the Russian Revolution. And then your assignment that's due next week is watching Animal Farm, uh, the 1954 version that is a cartoon and answering questions for it relating it back to the Russian Revolution. So the Tsar Liberator, Alexander II, he took steps basically to modernize Russia because they were not industrializing as quickly as other European countries and the US. So remember imperialism came after the Industrial Revolution. Industrial Revolution was when Countries created factories and businesses, and they mass produced items. If a country mass produces items, that means that they can sell a lot of it to the world. And also, it means that they're creating the top and the best products for its time. So, Russia was not modernized, they're still very agricultural. And then his steps for modernization was to eliminate the system of serfdom, jury trials and relaxed censorship laws. He created local assemblies to fix local issues because Russia is really big, increased industrial productions, and expanded transportation by creation of more railroads. So these all seem like really good ideas in terms of allowing the country to thrive a little more. So a serf. A serf is basically an agricultural worker that were at the bottom of the social ladder in Russia. It's similar to peasants in ancient regime France. Remember back to the French Revolution. There were social rankings where peasants were at the bottom. We got nobles, clergy, and the king above them. And then basically Similar to the peasants in France before the French Revolution, these people, they worked for the land and they produced food for the country. So it sucks for them because the average lifespan is 35 years old. Today, the average lifespan is about 75. So it's 40 years more today than what the peasants' life was like back in Russia, 100 and say 40 years ago. And then life by the numbers. So remember there was a population boom 
and peasants in Russia between 1861 and 1897. The country grew about 30 million people and that's a huge amount. How could these people, these peasants, support such a huge population when them themselves are basically dying, starving, and living in poverty? Another thing that you saw from analyzing the data was one of four peasant babies died before the age of one. And literacy rate in Russia rose from 21% to 40% in about 17 years from 1897 to 1914. So it seems like it's a lot, but in reality, that's really low still. In the US, we have about a 99% literacy rate, and we're not even the top country in terms of that. Uh, so the literacy rate rose because people started reading the Enlightenment thinkers, John Locke, Montesquieu, Rousseau, remember these people that talked about life, liberty, pursuit of happiness, separation of powers, and also Karl Marx. So you analyzed this last week, it was due by Thursday at 8 p.m. So Karl Marx, this guy, he wrote the Communist Manifesto, and basically he talked about a struggle between social classes. Those that have, basically those that own factories, those that have money, versus those that do not have, the workers. Basically, those at the top, they're very selfish, they overwork the people, and the workers are always getting taken advantage of because they have low wages, long working hours, and they never have a chance to move up in society. The only change that can happen is when the working class comes together to overthrow the current system. And his idea was to create a classless society where there are no hierarchies, so there is no person at the bottom, no person at the top, everybody is at the same level. So now we have Tsar Alexander III, the son of Alexander II. He takes over after his dad dies and he basically ends all modernization that his dad did. So he called for an idea called Russification basically assimilating all non-Russian people, trying to make them believe in Russian ideals, Russian ideas, religion. And there were a lot of Jews in Russia. So of course these people were not happy about this. He also imposed rigid censorship and also created a secret police to stop people from having revolutionary ideas. So anybody that talked bad about the government or try to create change, he would have the secret police look into it and stop it as soon as they started it. So Russo-Japanese War. Basically this was a war between Russia and Japan between 1904 and 1905 over Manchuria and Korea. The Japanese actually defeated Russia because they had the Meiji Restoration in the 1860s and 1870s means that Japan modernized really quickly. They basically opened up all their trade routes to Western countries, which meant that they got the newest weapons, the best machinery. And at the same time, it could mean that they also got taken advantage of, but it did help their country grow and become stronger because they realized what these Western countries were doing. Um, so they created factories and that's why in the 1900s when we talk about the world powers, Japan is usually a part of it too because they are able to modernize, industrialize. So we got something called Bloody Sunday, which was a result of Russia losing to Japan in the Russo-Japanese War. Uh, so Tsar Nicholas II took over in 1894 and he was a weak leader. Basically his leadership under his leadership, the military had a lot of defeats and there were deaths of a lot of people based on hunger, based on the war. And he is actually the last Tsar of Russia from the Romanov family. I know a lot of you probably have heard of him or his family. Um, he has a daughter named Anastasia 
And I know that was a really famous book as well. So a lot of people are trying to say that they were Anastasia. Um, I'll go into more detail about this later on. So Bloody Sunday. Basically, the people of Russia were tired of losing and the incompetence by Nicholas II. Um, so they started to organize. Uh, there was a priest named Georgi Apollonovic Gapon, and he marched to Windsor Palace in St. Petersburg to make demands to the Tsar. Uh, basically, the Imperial Guards shot at the strikers, and then people all over the country just were really pissed because Russia was going down into the dumps. So people all over the country started to riot and strike. Uh, we're going to move on. Section 2 is about the revolution beginning. So revolutions of the past, remember revolutions are a dramatic, often violent, hard reaching change in the way something works, is organized, or people's ideas about it. And we have the French Revolution, where the whole ancient regime system, the feudal system, was just destroyed. And then we also have the American Revolution, where the American colonists, or the British colonists, they basically overthrew the British crown and created their own country with their own laws. Bloody Sunday. Tsar Nicholas II created some reforms. He took the people's words and in 1905 in October he creates the October Manifesto. Uh, basically this ends unlimited power of the Tsar. They expand the civil rights, so there's freedom of speech, freedom of press, and assembly. Sounds really familiar to the American Constitution. So of course, they were reading up on a lot of the Enlightenment thinkers. The creation of the Duma. Basically, the Duma is a legislative body that would be elected by the people. So these people are the ones that the people elect, and these people create laws. Similar to the U.S. Congress. And then a right to vote for all. And basically the people are allowed to have unions and parties that have different ideologies. So this is great because different people are now allowed to gain power. People that probably might not believe in the czar have opportunity to have a seat in creating laws now. Which was never possible before. So... For the rest of this section, uh, you will have basically read through it through the DBQ, the causes and effects of the Russian Revolution. So remember, Russia entered World War One in August 1914. Uh, remember, under Tsar Nicholas II, he wasn't a great leader, so there are heavy losses. You'll read through this in the DBQ, and then the peasants. Basically, they still experience a lot of food shortages. There's few factories, they live in poverty still, and they just lack food, food and clothes. So these are two parties that are vying for power, the Mensheviks and the Bolsheviks. The Bolsheviks are just an extreme form of Marxist ideas, so communist ideas. While the Mensheviks were more, I don't know, they were more laid back. They wanted to be patient. And then in the reading, you'll also read about this crazy guy. His name is Rasputin. This guy, he has like nine lives, really hard to kill. So you'll probably read about him too. In your causes and effects of the Russian Revolution. And then we got the March Revolution. Uh, you'll read about this too. Okay, so we're going to move on to section 3, which is comparing the Russian Revolution to Animal Farm. I'm pretty sure many of you have read the book Animal Farm before, and if not, this is an opportunity to watch a movie about it. So content objective, I'll be able to understand the Russian Revolution and create a newscast for it. Basically, in my previous years, the kids created a newscast, kind of like in TV, watch the news, um, and they created skits based on the causes and effects of the Russian Revolution. Because we're not in class right now, 
we're not able to do that, so we're just going to be watching the movie and comparing it to what actually happened. The vocabulary of the day, abdicated, Vladimir Lenin, and Russian Revolution. And this is, is the agenda. And we'll our movie, and you'll be answering questions about the movie. So steps of the Russian Revolution, 1917 to 1918. So in 1917, this is when the Tsar's power is basically ending. This is when Russia also pulls out of the war because they're going through a civil war. So in March, Tsar Nicholas II, he abdicated or he gave up his rule. And this was a result of losing in World War I and also the Russo-Japanese War. He lost a lot of support from his people. There's also food shortages because wars are really expensive. And because during wartime, a lot of the men are actually fighting. So the country isn't producing as much. And at the same time, the items that the country does produce, they send it to the war front. So a lot of the peasants are suffering even more. And there's also anarchy. Basically, there's a lot of different parties that are trying to gain power. And then there's a provisional government that is set up, led by the Duma. And then there's the Bolshevik Revolution in November 1917. And then in 1918, we have Lenin coming into power. So the social causes of the Russian Revolution. Uh, the first one is a rigid class structure. Remember like the French Revolution, when people at the bottom become tired of their situation, their lives, then they stand up and do something about it. Remember the people at the bottom make up a majority of the population in a country. A lot of the peasants were suffering from hunger, there's a lot of inflation, so they couldn't really buy items. And of course, they're overworked by a lot of the people at the top. Also, this idea of russification. There's also oppression and discrimination amongst people that were not Russian. Like anti-Semitism. Basic hatred against the Jews. And then there are secret revolutionary groups that are formed, like the Bolsheviks. Economic causes of revolution. Basically, people had no money, they had no food, inflation, and remember industrialization, it creates even more distinct social class where the gap between the rich and the poor grows even more. Political causes of the revolution. So remember, Russia was an autocracy. So the government, the czar, has unlimited power which changes a little bit with the October Manifesto in 1905, remember? Um, also, the Russo-Japanese War. Russia was basically humiliated by an Asian country, which back in the day, usually they were seen as weaker. And also, wars are really costly. And since Russia lost, they had to take a large brunt of the financial blame. And then there's also the Bloody Sunday when the Imperial Guards shot at the people, uh, which created further distrust between the Tsar and the people. And then World War I. Russia was destroyed in the war. They lost territory, they lost money, millions of people were killed, and the country had no money. No money for the people, no money for the war. And the people were just fed up and done with the Tsar. So Tsar Nicholas II abdicated and he stepped down in 1917. So the Duma was created by, or the Duma created a provisional government led by Alexander Kerensky, which is this guy right here. And the provisional government did not work because of the Petrograd Soviet, which forbade people to obey the provisional government unless the people agreed to them so of course the people didn't agree to it and there was still inflation and hunger from the people because Russia was still in war so this is a large reason why the people did not agree to the provisional government so we have Vladimir Lenin and the October Revolution Basically, in October 1917, 
Vladimir Lenin, the leader of the Bolsheviks. Him and his people and his supporters basically overthrew the provisional government and took over control. He helps Russia pull out of World War I. And then now there's a civil war between the Red Army, which are the Bolsheviks, and the White Army, which are the anti-Bolsheviks. And then we're going to talk a little bit about Tsar Nicholas II and the Romanov family. So after the Tsar abdicated, he was fleeing. And on July 16, 1918, him and his family were eventually executed. The crazy thing is that one of their daughter's body or remains was never found. And that's why after this, a lot of people claim to be Anastasia from the Romanov family. Um, and it was never confirmed that any of them were her. So it's still a mystery where we don't know what happened to her body. Or if she was actually alive and she escaped. Uh, during this time, we have the Mensheviks and the Bolsheviks still both fighting for power. So the Bolsheviks, basically, they were, remember extremists? They were Marxists who favored in having a socialist party. And in this government, there's a small elite at the top that guides the country. So workers, workers believed that they needed the Bolshevik leaders to guide them in the street and in the factories. Uh, remember, this is a classist society because these ideas were created by Karl Marx. And then we have the White Army. Basically, the White Army, they were from the Tsarist army before. However, they weren't really prepared. They weren't really well organized. The leaders were really weak. And by 1920, they ran out of volunteers. And in 1922, Russia was renamed the USSR, or the Soviet Union. And then the Bolshevik leaders, there were three big ones. On the left, we have Leon Trotsky. In the middle, we have Moisei Solomonovic Yuritsky. And he was basically the Cheka leader. The Cheka was a police force in Russia during the Bolshevik reign. And then on the right, we have Vladimir Lenin. So the main ideas of Lenin was that he followed the teachings of Marx and made Russia into a communist state. Basically, he disbanded all hierarchy and social classes and he created a centrally planned economy where a lot of the people, they worked for the country. There weren't as many private ownership anymore. Um, and he punished those people that disagreed with his ideas with death or exiling them to Siberia, which is a really cold country, a lot of snowstorms, which is not a really pleasant place to be. Cheka, the police force, they're all, they were the ones carrying out these executions um, of people that are suspected to go against the communist government. Um, Moisei Solomonovic Yuritsky, basically he was assassinated a year into the Bolshevik reign by a Russian army cadet. Um, it was in retaliation for the execution of this cadet's friends and other officers. However, even after Yuritsky was assassinated, the Cheka still had a huge force and power within the Bolshevik government throughout the Bolshevik reign. And then a little bit about Leon Trotsky. There and Lenin died. There were two people vying for power. Joseph Stalin and Leon Trotsky. Everybody thought Leon Trotsky would become the leader because he was the right hand man of Lenin. However, Joseph Stalin, he gained a lot of trust from people in the government at the time and he became the leader of the USSR. He eventually exiles Trotsky to Mexico because why have an enemy in your country 
it just creates a lot of distrust and the people can't overthrow you led by Trotsky. So he just exiles him to Mexico and in 1940 Stalin sends someone to assassinate Trotsky so he dies in 1914 in Mexico. And then we have Joseph Stalin and the Great Purge. So we'll, we'll learn a little bit more about Stalin later on in the next unit. Comes into power, he has something called the Great Purge. And is a trials that were unpublicized where a lot of the old Bolshevik leaders were found guilty of treason and they were executed or put in prison. The idea behind this was to basically eliminate all remains of the Bolshevik ideas and leaders because once he came into power he wanted all power for himself so what better way to maintain all power for yourself than to kill off all leaders from the previous regime under Lenin and then now you're going to be analyzing Animal Farm I'll post this YouTube link on Schoology and you just watch it and I'll also post questions associated with this movie and the Russian Revolution on Schoology as well. Good luck.